Now let's move on to discuss the major cell type of a lymphatic system, lymphocytes, including the formation of lymphocytes and the lymphocytes themselves, B cells, T cells, and the natural killer cells. The primary cells of the lymphatic system are the lymphocytes. These cells are responsible for responding to the presence of foreign proteins, antigens, bacteria, viruses, and altered or infected self cells. Lymphocytes include B cells, T cells, and natural killer or NK cells. They move from the circulation, travel and monitor the tissues, and then return to the circulation via the lymphatic system. Some lymphocytes can remain inside the lymphatic system in either a lymph node or a lymph organ for months to years waiting for activation as part of an immune response. Let's begin by discussing B cells. B cells develop in the bone marrow and become antibody producing plasma cells. These cells of the immune system are involved in humoral immunity and this can lead to long term immunity. B cells are clonal because one cell gives rise to a long line of specific B cells. The two main types of B cells are plasma cells and memory cells. Plasma B cells produce antibodies against a specific antigen, and memory B cells respond quickly to a second future exposure to a specific antigen. The activation of B cells can occur both in response to interaction with T cells and independent of T cell activation. Memory and effector B cells. Each B cell produces a single species of antibody, each with a unique antigen binding site. And when a naive or memory B cell is activated by antigen with the aid of a helper T cell, it proliferates and differentiates into an antibody secreting effector cell. Such cells make large amounts of soluble antibody which has the same unique antigen binding site as the cell surface antibody receptor that served earlier as the antigen receptor. Effector B cells can begin secreting antibody while they're still small lymphocytes. By the end of the stage of their maturation pathway, there are a large plasma cell, which continuously secretes antibodies at an astonishing rate of about 2,000 molecules per second. This flowchart depicts B cell development in the body. It occurs in three main stages. Stage 1 is the generation and maturation in the bone marrow. Stage 2 is activation which involves the interaction with antigen. And stage 3 is differentiation into a plasma or memory B cell. The generation of B cells. The first stage in the development of plasma and memory B cells is the generation of mature immunocompetent B cells. This takes place in the bone marrow. Progenitor B cells in the absence of antigen undergo a sequence of immunoglobulin or Ig gene rearrangements. This leads to a mature B cell. Membrane bound Ig either IgM or IgD goes with the naive B cell as it exits the bone marrow and enters the circulation. The naive B cell with an encounter with antigen becomes an active B cell. The second major type of lymphocytes in the lymphatic system are the T cells. T cells develop in the thymus. They differentiate into T helper cells or T cytotoxic cells. These cells of the immune system are central to what's called cell-mediate immunity. Upon activation with a specific antigen, T cells can target and kill infected or damaged cells in the body. Memory T cells can provide long-term immunity to specific antigens. And T helper cells are involved in the maturation of B cells into antibody-producing plasma cells. Let's continue our discussion of T cells. T-cell maturation. After being formed in the bone marrow, 
progenitor T cells migrate to the thymus. When the progenitor T cells arrive at the thymus, they do not express surface molecules such as CD4 or CD8 or the T cell receptor complex. And proteins such as RAG1 and RAG2 required for TCR arrangement, which are characteristic of T cells. After arriving at the thymus, these progenitor T cells enter the outer cortex and begin to proliferate slowly. During three weeks of development in the thymus, the differentiating T cells progress through a series of stages marked by the changes in their cell surface phenotype. T cell maturation in the thymus. T cell maturation, activation, and differentiation takes place in the thymus. The thymus in mammals is a bilobed organ located in a thoracic cavity overlying the heart and major blood vessels. Each lobe of the thymus is organized into lobules separated by trabeculae. These are connective tissues. Within each lobule, thymocytes, which are developing T cells, are arranged in the outer cortex and the inner medulla. The cortex is the outer portion of the thymus and it contains immature thymocytes. The medulla is the inner portion of the thymus and it contains mature thymocytes. Within the thymus, T cells undergo what's called positive and negative selection. Thymic selection is necessary to generate mature T cells that are self-MHC restricted and self-tolerant. In other words, they won't attack cells of the body. Thymic stromal cells, including epithelial cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells, play an essential role in thymic selection. While in the medulla of the thymus, the T cells are again presented with self-antigen in complex with MHC molecules on antigen-presenting cells, such as dendritic cells and macrophages. Thymocytes that interact too strongly with the antigen receive an apoptosis signal causing their death. The vast majority of all thymocytes initially produced die during thymic selection. A small minority of these cells survive and are selected to become regulatory T cells. The remaining cells then exit the thymus as mature, naive T cells. This process is called negative selection. The third type of lymphocyte in the lymphatic system are the natural killer cells, or NK cells. These are formed by the same lymphoid stem cells that give rise to T cells and B cells. Natural killer cells make up 5 to 10% of the circulating lymphocytes in the lymphatic system. They're known as large granular lymphocytes. The function of these cells is to monitor for foreign cells, virally infected cells, and cells expressing cancer antigens. Collectively, these actions are known as immune surveillance. Lymphocytes are involved in immune responses against foreign antigens or virally infected cells, and these responses can be divided into cell-mediated and humoral immunity. Humoral immunity involves soluble mediators against foreign antigens, and these are produced by B cells. B cells use antibodies to kill pathogens that are circulating in the body's fluid. There are many B cells which carry different antibodies for different antigens. When an antigen is recognized, the associated B cell is produced in mass quantities to release many antibodies. Antibodies kill pathogens by binding to them and grouping them together so that the pathogens cannot act. In cell-mediated immune responses, this involves the action of antigen-presenting cells, cytokines, and antigen-specific cytotoxic T cells. These responses involve the detection of antigens that reside within or on the surface of cells. T cells destroy virus-infected or mutated cells, and the T cell receptor recognize and bind to specific antigens on the cell surface and lyses the infected cells. Immune responses to infection. Pathogens or microorganisms are disease-causing organisms. Viruses, for example, take over and kill cells which cause sickness. 
bacteria in the body can release toxins or break down surrounding tissue, causing sickness. The surface of pathogen cells can be proteins, carbohydrates, or lipids, and these surface molecules are called antigens. The body recognizes antigens and uses the immune system for defense against pathogens. Once inside cells, the pathogens are harder to detect. Cell-mediated immunity recognizes and kills the body's own infected cells. For example, in the white pulp of the spleen, there are follicles rich in B cells and periarterial lymphoid sheaths, or PALs, and these are rich in T cells. Lymphocytes in the white pulp help fight infection in the body.